can you really grow a potato without digging? And if so, how are the yields from that no-dig bed compared to the yields from a regular bed that did require digging? If those two questions have been on your mind, you are in the right place, my friend, because in this video, I'm going to break down the results from a trial we did this season comparing dig and no-dig potato beds. I'll walk you through the full growing process, the way we control the variables, and of course, the results. Let's dive in. Hey there, I'm Jared, founder of the Vegetable Academy where I help serious home growers work toward vegetable mastery. I'm almost embarrassingly excited to talk potatoes with you today because the wait has been long. My students have been asking about no-dig potatoes. I've been wondering about no-dig potatoes for years. And quite frankly, it's time for some answers. Since I'm a thorough kind of guy, we're gonna take this step by step. I've organized this video into six sections. We'll start with a little bit of background talk. Then I'll take you out to the field and show you how we prepared the beds, how we planted the beds, how we maintained them, and even harvested them. And then we'll wrap things up by talking about the results at the end. Now, if that lineup seems too long for you, you're welcome to jump around to different sections that are particularly interesting. I'll leave some timestamps in the description below so you can do that easily. Without further ado though, let's set the stage with a little background on the subject. So why would you even want to consider growing potatoes without digging? Well, anyone that's dug a few hundred square feet of potatoes by hand knows that that answer is obvious. It's back-breaking work, it's slow, you never know where the next potato is going to be found. In a way it's exciting, but really, even though I actually love to dig, the harvest of potatoes would be something that I'd be happy to cut out of my to-do list. So, let's all admit that it would be nice to just be able to pick up potatoes off the ground. Now, if you've done a little digging into the subject, pun intended, you'll know that there are many other people that have tried growing no-dig potatoes before me. Ruth Stout is one of the growers that comes to mind first. She popularized a method of growing vegetables under a thick mat of hay. This worked particularly well for potatoes because you could tuck the seed potato underneath a thick mat of hay. The new tubers that formed would simply form within that hay structure. They wouldn't get exposed to light in the process. And when it was time for harvest, you could just slide back the hay and pull out these potatoes without any digging at all. It's pretty attractive. However, when I see other people publish their experiences with the root stout method, they either don't use enough hay or mulch material and their potatoes end up being green to a large extent, or they don't share any specifics, so we don't really know what lessons were learned, or they don't do a controlled trial and have another bed with a digging method right beside so that we can have a fair comparison to see if it actually was better or not. So there's some doubt in my mind about the effectiveness of this method. We don't really have any numbers to go by. The next grower that comes to mind in the world of no-dig vegetable growing would be Charles Dowding, who has been a spokesperson on this subject for years now. But if you look closely at his work, you'll notice that he actually does bury his seed potatoes under the soil. He'll dig a four to six inch hole, pop the seed potato in, and then when it comes time for harvesting, he is actually digging into the soil. You can't see any tubers on the surface. They're all buried within the soil. He calls the harvesting of potatoes rummaging, but it looks a lot like digging to me. So I'm still holding out a little bit of hope that we can figure out a way to harvest potatoes without any of that rummaging. And then if we look at the other end of the spectrum, we see people like John Jevons, who are advocating for double digging, which is an incredibly labor-intensive process of turning over an entire bed by hand but as you're turning over that bed by hand, you're also taking a garden fork and sticking it a foot deeper into the soil. So you're reaching a depth of almost two feet and loosening that entire volume of soil, adding an incredible amount of aeration, increasing the water absorption, increasing the oxygen availability for the microbes. It sounds great. And if the huge yields claimed by John Jevons are possible, then the huge amount of labor may actually be worth it. So to satisfy our curiosity, we're going to include a double dig bed in this trial as well. Now John Jevons has been great about publishing specifics in terms of what he's been able to achieve with the double digging method. But anytime I come across a no dig trial, the information is always pretty wishy-washy. And it doesn't leave us with any lessons learned because there just wasn't any control. So what the gardening world really needed was a controlled trial where we have a no dig bed right next to a dig bed with all other variables kept the same. So that's exactly what we set out to do this season. We devoted three of our standard sized beds 
to this trial. All of our beds are 20 feet long by 30 inches wide, which gives us a total of 50 square feet of growing space per bed. One bed was devoted to the double dig method. One bed was devoted to the no dig method, which used mulch exclusively as the cover material. The third bed was devoted to the no-till method, which is our standard bed preparation practice here where we loosen the soil with a broad fork and top the bed with compost every year. It's a pretty common practice among market growers these days. And then aside from the different bed preparation and planting method, we kept all the other variables the same. The three beds are at the same plot, so they receive the same sunlight. The starting soil base was the same. The irrigation was exactly the same. The planting and harvesting date was exactly the same. And by conducting the trial with two different varieties in each bed, we also hope to see whether or not a particular variety of potato could respond better to one or more of these growing techniques. So that gives you a bit of background perspective on our motivation for this trial. And without further ado, let's go back in time a little bit to this spring when we started with bed preparation. Well, it's May 14th and we're ready to commence the potato trial. On my right, we've got the double dug bed that will need uh, just a spade and a garden fork and a bucket for. In the center bed here, we'll have the no dig bed where all we need really is mulch. So we've got a couple bags of mulch to start us off, but we'll just be planting potatoes on the surface. So no soil working is needed at all. And on my left, we've got the no till bed that will just loosen with a broad fork be burying the potatoes several inches under the surface here so there's no mulch needed and soil preps pretty quick as well but there'll be no inverting of any soil here in this bed uh, so there's there's the basic lineup I'm just going to show you now the process for preparing each of these beds what's happened before this day already is that we've topped each bed with a couple inches of compost in spring that's our typical annual fertility plan and over the last several years, no tilling has happened here. We've just loosened the soil with a broad fork and, and topped up the beds annually, um, just like this year. So I'll start with uh, bed preparation on my left here with the, the no-till bed. I'll just loosen the soil with the broad fork and then rake it smooth and we'll be ready to plant after that. That was a pretty easy uh, bed preparation routine. Not tired at all. Next bed up is the double dug bed though. That's gonna take some work. The first step in the double dig procedure is to remove the top foot of the first strip of bed, put it in a bucket, and we'll then transfer that to the other side um, at the end of our bed preparation procedure. Let's do that first. first trench the soil is removed now the next step is to loosen the soil an extra foot beyond the point where I've dug already then I'll invert the next foot of soil on top of this loosened layer and repeat that process down the 20 foot length of this bed hooray
I actually made it to the end. Now, uh, just gotta drop this last bucket to fill in the hole on the other side, and we're done. observations at this point would just be that there was a lot more work. <laughs> I dredged up a bunch of sandy soil from deep within that bed. Now that sand is on the surface, I'm sure a lot of weed seeds came up with that, so I'm expecting this bed to be more weedy throughout the season. It's a lot more porous now. I'm sure water is going to percolate really well down there and it's great oxygen for all the microbes living in the soil. Um, but whether or not this will actually be more productive, at this stage all I can do is speculate, so I might as well save my words and wait to see how the numbers turn out when we harvest our potatoes later this year. We'll pick this up tomorrow when I come back here with some potatoes to plant. We're going to plant two varieties of potato in each bed just to make sure our results are consistent with different varieties. And since the mass of the seed potato can be a factor in the overall yield. I've gone ahead and measured the mass of 10 seed potatoes to make sure that they're consistent for each bed. So we'll be planting about 765 grams of smart seed potatoes in each bed and we'll be planting about 975 grams of Norlands in the other half of each bed. Now the mass of each individual seed potato varies a little bit, but that's the best I could do is control the the total mass of seed for each bed. We also know that the depth of a seed potato impacts the yield. So we need to control the depth of the seed potato as well in the beds where we're burying the seed. So in our double dug bed over here, we'll be planting the seed potatoes into holes that are dug to six inches deep. And also in this no-till bed, we're gonna plant our seed potatoes into holes that are dug six, six inches deep. In our center bed here, the no-till, no-dig bed, we'll be just planting the potatoes into the surface just by pressing them into the surface and adding mulch on top so there's no seed potato depth to control there at all just a different technique what you'll see next here is me just marking the beds first we'll space the potatoes out in a single row in each bed at 12 inch spacing and then i'll prepare the holes with my post hole digger here and make sure they're all the same depth let's roll Well, there are obviously faster ways to plant potatoes, but we're about precision with this experiment here. So measured each hole to a depth of six inches. Now the easy part is just to place the seed potatoes into each hole and we'll rake the holes shut after that.
Now we're ready to plant our final bed, the no dig bed in the center. What we're doing here is just simply pressing this, the seed potatoes into their spot in the bed. No soil covering at all. But we do need to cover the potatoes as they're growing to make sure that any tubers forming don't turn green. So what you'll see me do here is just place the potatoes on the bed and lay out the drip irrigation and then add on the first layer of mulch. Well, I think that's a wrap on today's jobs. We've got the drip lined up now. Every bed will get consistent irrigation, exactly the same throughout the whole season. We'll give it a good soak to begin with here, uh, and then just set it on a timer for the rest of the year. Mulch is so important with this no-dig bed, no-dig method, because we really can't allow those tubers to get exposed to any light at all so that, and have them turn green on us. So I'll, I'll need to come back here regularly throughout the season and top this up with more mulch to maintain full coverage. We won't be adding mulch to these dug beds on the side, but I will need to come back and heal these potatoes so that we make sure that we cover any new forming potatoes with soil and prevent sunlight exposure there as well. The next clip will show you how these beds are shaping up later on in the season. All right, we are five weeks in now. It is June 23rd. You can see we've had a lot of growth since that initial planting, but there are not a lot of obvious differences between the three beds. What I've noticed uh, most dramatically is that we've got a lot more weed pressure in the, the double dug bed where we've really disturbed that soil a ton. Minimal weed pressure in these other two beds where we haven't flipped over that soil at all. There is almost no difference between the amount of growth in each bed. If I had to pick a winner, I would pick the double dug bed. If we were to cut off all of the stems at the base right now, I would bet that there'd be a slightly higher percentage of, of plant matter in that bed, but really too close to call for sure here. Uh, so I don't think that there's any bed that's clearly pulling ahead in that regard. What I'm going to show you today is just how we heal these plants and treat them a little bit differently in, in each bed. This is something we do with all of our crops at this stage once they're about a foot to 18 inches above the soil. I'll just come along each side of the bed and, and heal up the, the soil around the plants so that we protect any of those tubers that are forming from getting exposed to the sunlight and turning green. So by healing we can, we can stop that from happening. But I can't disturb the soil at all in this no-dig bed. So in this case, I'll just be adding mulch. I brought a couple bags of leaves here that I'll be adding on top to make sure that any potatoes that are forming there above the soil are totally covered from the light. And before I do that, that uh, healing, I'll, you'll see me remove the drip tapes on the, the two outer beds, the double dug bed and the no-till bed. That's just a common part of our um, healing routine. Pull off the drip tape, heal the potatoes, put the drip tape back on so we don't mess up the drip tape in the process. In the no dig bed, I'll just leave that drip tape still right on top of the soil underneath this mulch. That's what you'll see. I'll just let the camera roll and check in with you after we're done.
pretty quick task mid-season here just to get our beds tidied up a little bit and mounted so that we don't get any green potatoes. I was glad I did this as early as I did because there were some thin patches in our first round of mulch here that had developed so now we thicken that layer up and I'll probably need to do that again later this season still. But I don't plan on doing any more killing for these two um, outside beds. The process was definitely the easiest with our, our no dig bed in the middle but I did have to round up those uh, bags of leaves beforehand so that takes a bit of time as well so if you count that we're probably kind of balanced out at about even still for in terms of labor um, at this stage. That's all for right now. We'll check in again uh, later on this season. It's August 4th today and we're back here just to do a quick little top up of mulch for the center bed just to make sure we're keeping all of those tubers in total darkness underneath. Pretty quick job. I, I did see one red Norland peeking up above the leaf mulch here in the middle of the bed, so I'm glad I did this today. Everything will be covered now and probably good for the rest of the season. We'll let these vines continue to die back and come back here in fall before things freeze up and harvest and you can get, to get a sense of how the yields actually end up comparing. All right, my friends, the day has finally come. The wait is over. It is September 24th, 132 days after planting, and I'm gonna go for it. I can't wait any longer. I wanted to make sure we at least allow these potatoes 120 days to mature because research has shown that yield can continue to improve until that point. One of the new things I'll be recording today is the time it takes to harvest each crop because that's one of the big variables that I'm expecting for the mulch bed in the middle here. So I'll start and stop the timer for each bed and we'll see how the numbers compare when we're all finished up. pretty fast. So the digging is finally done. The no-till, no-dig bed in the center here was the clear winner in terms of taking the minimum time to harvest. But let's see how the yield tally up here. Starting with the double dug bed on my right.
So those are your measurements. I can't remember those numbers that I just read out. So let's head to the studio and take a closer look. Okay, I've got five slides to share with you today. The first two have charts like this. The last three are graphs that will help you visualize the information a little better. Let's start with our inputs. Primarily, I was focused on recording the variable of time. Financial costs were about the same for all the beds. The seed costs were the same. The amount of water was the same. The compost inputs were the same. So the only thing that really varied was the time input. So we, I recorded the time took to compost those beds or add compost on the top, the, prepare the beds, plant the beds, set up the irrigation, maintain the beds and harvest them at the end. The main two categories that varied significantly were the bed preparation and harvest time. Double digging led the way in terms of requiring the most preparation time, obviously. The no-till bed is pretty much on par with the no-dig investment of zero minutes for bed preparation. It's just so quick to prepare a bed when it's no-till. Then if we look at harvest time requirements, the double dug bed and no-till bed are the highest, almost identical, and the no-dig bed is again the winner. So our no-dig bed comes out on top when we look at the total time investment by far requiring the least amount of time. No-till bed coming in second. I could have accelerated the planting speed a little bit with the double dig and no-till beds. In this case, I used a, a hole digger to make precise holes. I didn't measure the time that it took me to measure the depth of those holes and, and adjust them as necessary, but this three minute value in here could be removed if I just were to plant these beds quickly with a spade like I do in, in other situations when I'm just trying to plant a bed efficiently. But really, that wouldn't have made the difference. We'd still have a huge advantage with the no dig in terms of time. The next slide here outlines the outputs of our bed. We've got the same headings on the top, double dig, no dig, and no till. But I've added a separate column for each of the varieties that we tested. So in each category, we've got Norland and Smart Potatoes listed. And I was glad that we added this second variety for each of these beds because they actually performed a little differently. First off, let's look at the quality. We noticed that scab was a little more common in the double dig bed and the no-till bed. I can show you a picture of that here. And the potatoes in the no-dig bed were a lot cleaner. Some were just incredibly clean. But using all of that mulch did invite and increase a slug population somehow. So slugs could have come in on that mulch and they certainly were encouraged by the the habitat provided by that mulch. So if I were to use this mulching method on a widespread scale, I would need to have a plan in place to address the slug risk because that's gonna come up. I didn't have a slug problem at this plot before, but slugs did make themselves known this year, damaged a couple of the potatoes, not a significant number, but anytime I see slugs, I, I wanna be on, on alert and stop the problem before it gets bad. So that's a concern with the no dig method using all of this mulch. Then if we look onto the yield categories, I've included a row here for kilograms and pounds, but it's the same same variable. We're just looking at the total harvest quantity for each of these varieties. You're probably wondering which bed was the highest yield, and for that you could skip down to the total at the bottom here, where I've averaged the total yield for both of the varieties in each bed, and the double dig bed and no-till bed were pretty much identical with the no dig bed falling in last place almost 25 percent behind the other beds in total yield but if we look closer at the data from each of the varieties we notice that the norland varieties were almost on par a half bed of norland potatoes produced about 36 pounds in each case which is lower than what i've had in in previous years it was an exceptionally dry year so i know that i can produce more norlands on a pounds per square foot basis. But regardless, what we're really looking for is the comparison and it's pretty consistent across the board there for Norland. The bigger difference was with the smart potatoes that yielded a lot more, 48 and 47 pounds in the dig beds and the no dig bed was just around 33 pounds. So significant difference there in yield. While I was recording all this other data, I thought I might as well count the number of potatoes I harvested from each of these trial beds and record that as well. So 
You can see the number of tubers harvested here from each of the trials. And there wasn't really any obvious pattern that developed here. We got similar numbers across the board. I don't think it's worth spending some time talking about this, but if you want to look at it in more detail, I'll post these uh, charts in the classroom as well. On to the next one. Now we get to look at some of our graphs to help visualize this stuff a little better. This first graph looks at the yield per area of each of these beds. These first three beds are our beds, and I've also pulled in some data from one of Charles Dowding's videos that he's shared. He's been doing a trial with no dig and no till beds for years. And in his case, his no dig potatoes perform better than his no till potatoes by a small margin, at coming in at 1.2 pounds per square foot of his growing space. We got a higher yield than, than his results, but that could be due to a number of factors. So I'm not gonna say that his, his growing techniques aren't aren't sound. In our case though we did have a higher yield. Our double dug bed came in at 1.7 pounds per square foot pretty much on par with our no-till bed and our no dig bed averaged 1.38 pounds per square foot with our two varieties. So this is somewhat contradictory in that our our no-till bed outperformed our no-dig bed while Charles Dowding's no-dig bed outperformed his no-till bed. But since Charles but since Charles uses a different bed size and different plant spacing to grow potatoes. In his trial, I decided to graph the yield per plant as well so we could have a closer look at what each plant was producing. Our yield still came out on top, but this graph does show that his no-dig plants were producing a little bit more than our no-dig plants, while our, our dug beds produced more yield per plant than his dug beds. So, Again, some contradiction there in the data from our two separate studies. But this last graph is probably my favorite slide here because it summarizes all the most valuable findings in one spot. We've got the three beds still highlighted. The blue column is the double dug bed, the red column is the no dig bed, and the yellow columns are the no till beds. I've graphed two different variables here. We're looking at both the space and time efficiency of production. This first group of columns represents the space efficiency by graphing the harvest per square foot of bed space. In this case, we see how we can get a higher yield by using one of the digging methods, either double dig or no-till, with no dig falling behind, with the lowest harvest there in our case. So if you want to grow the most food and space is your limiting factor, you're willing to put in the time, then choose a digging method. On the other side of the graph, we've got the harvest quantity per minute of labor. And this shows us that if time is your limiting factor, you, that is, you want to grow the most food with the least time, then the no-dig method should be your top choice because it was the fastest by far. This Coming in second, we've got the no-till method, but far behind both of those other methods, we've got the double-dug method in last place. So it's pretty easy to favor our no-till and no-dig method as compared to the double dig method based on these results. So there's the data, I'll post this in the classroom and we can continue the conversation there. So now that you've seen our full results, which method would you choose? It should be obvious if you take the data to heart. In our case, I would probably stick with our standard no-till practice because it gave us a yield very comparable to the double dig method with a fraction of the labor. That would be my pick if I was after the highest yield. Does that mean I'm giving up on the no-dig method entirely? No, I'm still holding out hope that Maybe with an increased quantity of mulch, we can get a yield comparable to the no-till method. But that trial will have to wait for another season. If you still think there are unanswered questions on the subject of no-dig potatoes, please do a study of your own, but do us all a favor and include a control bed beside your no-dig beds for comparison and record your measurements so we can all learn from your experience. Now I hope that you found this trial useful for your own growing purposes, and if you have, please consider subscribing so you don't miss another video in the future. But if you're really ready to take your vegetable game to the next level, kickstart your progress today with my free training. I'll leave a link in the description below. In this free class, I break down three of the common myths that were holding us back when we were getting started and the changes that we've been able to make since then that have meant increased yields, more consistent results, and ultimately being able to grow our own year-round supply of vegetables, even in a cold climate. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.